Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com and we have Fluke and U Unity back in the lab again. The 289 and what is it? UT181A. So I did a full review of this. Check the link down below if you didn't see it. It's kind of a long one because like I said, it's kind of a full review and it could have been twice as long if I would have taken a bunch of measurements. But I took some, just enough, I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Today, I'm gonna to tear these down. I'm gonna show you what's inside, okay? So let's just come over to the bench. Let's just do that. Oh, and by the way, I had the screen protector on the Unity, so we're gonna take that off too. So in the last video, it looks great in the lab, but in the video and editing, I could see the little scuff marks on the plastic that covers, you know, the little soft plastic thing. So I took it off, or we're gonna take it off, okay? And then we're gonna, uh, open up the meters too. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, I should have done this from the beginning of the video. It did. It looks better in person than it did in the video, but I'll just peel this off. And it does look very shiny and very, yeah, very nice display, right? Now, one thing I've noticed in editing is a lot of times it was, wasn't focused very good on this and I maybe it's because of contrast it has to be like the camera has to be level or parallel with the display but you can see back here it's in focus this is a little bit closer to the camera sometimes because I'm holding it in my left hand over this way so if this is in focus and the background's in focus this should be in focus but yeah I noticed that in editing the focus on that was a little more difficult, so sorry about that. Not sure how to improve that. Hold the menu, you get the camera nice and close. So that's what it looks like. Try to get the best picture. It's just, you know, as far as displays go, it's an old display. It's, you know, it's been designed a long time ago. The new color displays are just much better, especially the black background I like. What do you guys think? Which display did you like? Comment below, please. All right, guys. So to take off um, the compartment to get to the fuses was pretty easy. You just have this thumb screw. And that's probably why it doesn't have the IP rating because it's probably easier for dust. I can see the circuit board down in through there. So, I, you know, dust can ingress and water can ingress easily into here. And... You can see down in here, there's, I think you can see the board down in there. A uh, the little cushion there to hold the batteries in place. Here's all the batteries. And, you know, a nice protective case. Now, over here, this guy, I can tell you, there's two screws here. And then there's one here. So, they're PIMS, you know, metal fasteners in here. And the screws are retained into the lid. So, that's nice. So, they don't fall out. But those two little screws I took out too. I'm not sure if I had to take them out, but this thing was, that uh, bottom was stuck on there really well. Didn't want to come off, it was sealed. So I really had to kind of tweak it and pull it out. So maybe they just don't expect you to get in there very often. Maybe it's the first time, but yeah, it's really deep, the channels in here. And yeah, that was hard to get off. Okay, so we got the battery, the rechargeable battery, and the fuses, just like in the Fluke, okay? I can see a board down in there, but with all this, with the two screws here, the screw here, and the two here holding the sides on, that thing was sealed. All right, guys, you know what? I want to I wanna make a suggestion or a challenge to Fluke. This Fluke 87 came out in 88, I believe, and... Last upgrade was in the early 2000s. So it seemed like after 12 years, it had gone from an 87 to an 87.5. A bunch of revisions every few years or a couple years or something, right? While this guy in two decades hasn't changed in around two decades, right? Hasn't changed, still the 289. We don't want to see, I don't want to see a big meter like this. Let me know what you guys think. I think these guys, copied that form factor and that layout just because 
that was the king on the block. But I like him to see come out with something smaller, something fits, you know, form factor. Kind of like the, the old 189, or maybe like this KPS, maybe in a bigger display if you want. But, you know, something with a colored display, OLED, you know, something more, something smaller, right? What do you guys think? I think it's time. We don't need to call it the 289. You could call it the 289, uh, or call it the 389. Come out with a new one, new series. Now, I know you can't change the 87 just because people locked in and buying these every year. Regardless, it's just on the buy form. <laughs> I think that's, that's my humble opinion. I don't know why that one's still being sold, but the 289, I don't know why it was ever sold. Well, back in the day, a couple decades ago, it was probably useful, but nowadays we have a lot of logging meters that have Bluetooth. We want Bluetooth on the meters. Unity, I think you ought to, instead of having the optics to the USB, uh, you have that inexpensive, what, $30-something, or the Bluetooth, the optics to Bluetooth, uh, provide that instead. That would be a big upgrade, I think. What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think below. Oh, and Fluke, if you did, if you do come out with a new meter in the last, come on, it's been a couple decades. Come out with a new meter with a really nice display and with the decimal function, make the 189 or the TX3, redo that. You know, the TX3 would be a cool meter. Yeah, make a retro, you know, come back with one of these with the OLED display with logging. You could easily do that in this form factor. That'd be a super cool meter. I'll bet you that would sell like hotcakes. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, people love Fluke, even if it's made in Taiwan. You know? I mean, I don't think it would matter as long as it had the Fluke name. So, there you go, guys. You could do it. Under 400 bucks, too. Okay? Do the Retro TX3. That's my challenge. <laughs> and I'd be happy to promote them and sit right here on my bench so everybody gets to see it every video. So, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the video. To get the back cover off, I took two screws out there, a screw here, those two screws, and they're all right here. And you can see they're just, uh, what do you call them, the plastic type screws, kind of like a wood screw. So it's not into metal, so it's just screwed into plastic. There's one here too, but uh, that'll probably come off when I take the top off. So I'm going to probably need two hands to do that, I'm guessing. Well, actually... I can only, yeah, I think I can get it off. Sometimes these things are held on really well and feels like, kind of need help with another hand. Okay, so here's the little springy things for the battery. And there's a screw there. I'm gonna push out so I don't lose it. Okay, there it is there. So, Okay, here's a little thing to hold the fuses in. Uh, you can see these things down here to hold the bottom in right there. So yeah, made very well, right? Here's some little features here to grab on down here, hold the boards in place. That's the display to push the display in. So, and then this guy here is some kind of shielded plastic. It's kind of an interesting uh, thing that Fluke did. Okay, I gotta take a screw off to get that off, but yeah, here's uh, our large resistor. That's a one zero with a two, so that's a one K resistor. And okay, it says RT, but these are, uh, I'm sure PTCs. And I I can see a blue thing down there. It looks like an MOV. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take that screw out and lift that off. Here's another large resistor. Here's where the battery tabs get pushed down. There's the buzzer. So it is shielded, you know, I mean, really well, right? Now, this clear plastic is what captures this plastic. And then there's kind of a rubber on the outside. So that might be why it doesn't seal, you know, and also this thing up here, the way that's put in, that might be why it didn't have the IP rating, the ingress protection rating, uh, as well as the Unity has. All right, so that's what it looks like. 
this cover. It's just kind of a plastic. There's some kind of metallic in here that's, see the metal tab right here where it's screwed down? So in the one spot, it's shielded right down here, or right down here. So you can kind of see the board exposed there. So that's the grounding lug. Okay, so I'll just bring the camera down so you can take a look at it. Okay, there's our three MOVs. And here's our two PTCs and our current shunt. All right, and these yellow capacitors are uh, tantalum capacitors. And it looks like a power supply here. And what is that guy there? Is that a battery or that's a C? So that's probably a super capacitor to keep the memory, I'm assuming. All right, I'm going to lift this up with you guys watching. Now, I've got two screws here, two here, and two here. I had to make sure they're all loosened so I could lift this up. And then it kind of pulled apart as I was pulling. And I'm assuming the battery's catching right now. So there we go. There's the battery cable. All right, so we got that disconnected. Okay, so here we have a shield here, metal foil shield. Okay, our fuses. And so basically the shield starts right above the fuse, goes all the way to the top, so right above here. So it pretty much covers all this stuff, okay? And then it looks like this is, I'm not sure. If, yeah, that feels like a metal box. So that looks like another shield around something but look at this we have four ptcs and they have heat shrink around them to kind of keep them together and we have three movs so a little bit more than the flu cad okay we have some a bunch of surface mount milfs now milfs are the large round they almost look like a through-hole resistor with the leads cut off and then little caps put on the end and then diode, so that's probably for current protection there. We have a, that's probably a capacitor there. Sometimes those blue capacitors look like MOVs. And then up here, more poly capacitors. Those four, the three reds and the orange. A couple crystals, and look at that. A CR2032 battery. So I'll just kind of glide over this so you can look at it. Now this spring thing here makes contact with that shield. Kind of see how it's dug in right there. And then as far as the terminals go, you can see the plastic, kind of a shield with like a slot in the board and the tab. So it kind of isolates each one. Each one's kind of, except for this one, this one comes down this large pad. Okay, and then this one's put over on the far side to kind of point away from the other ones. So if we come over and look at Fluke, kind of a similar kind of thing. They have the double prongs, one on each side. Okay. And then I think what they're doing is they're relying on these plastic features here to kind of isolate the voltages from each other here. So you can see the three MOVs here, the two PTCs, or here a group of four PTCs and three MOVs. Oh, and then also all the yellow capacitors, all the tantalums. So in lower cost meters, you might say aluminum electrolytic or polymer cap. Polymers are better than aluminum electrolytic, but tantalums usually cost a little bit more. Actually, this blue thing, they look like capacitors, but that's actually another MOV. So that's a, a 10D180, so it's 10 millimeters diameter and 180, so 180 volts, I, what it looks like to me. So 
Yeah, that is interesting. So we got three of the kind of smaller fat MOVs over here, and then this big guy. All right, before putting this back together, I just want to pull, point out the two LEDs for the optics over here, okay? And those look like they're sealed very well, why we have a good IP rating. And then also these bosses, these little pipes here that cover these pipes. So you got a very secure connection and there's metal inserts for the screws. And you know what's really cool? Or I mean, all six of these guys have the metal inserts and they're all the same way. You see the big bosses that go over the tops of these guys. And over here, all those screws are captive. So they're all captive so they don't fall out. So that's really a nice touch. It actually slides very easily, just drops right in. So it's got a nice, clean, like perfect fit. And then over here, these things are all plastic. So uh, this, you can see this kind of screws, they just are set into the plastic. So yeah, not quite as nice touch. I'm actually kind of surprised, even the one that goes down into the, you know, that makes the metal to the metal for the shield, even that's got the plastic threads. So, I mean, meant for, you know, it's just going to the plastic instead of a metal insert with machine threads. I would have thought, at least for that one, they would have had a metal insert. All right, guys. Um, I just went on to turn both meters on so I could show you the displays. But wait, you know what? The batteries died in this. And I didn't really see a warning on it. They just went out. Uh, and I, even on this one, the charge, I'm down to, like, I don't know how many blocks there are, but it's down to the last one, I think. So probably 25% of the charge left, I'm assuming. So anyway, there you go. Uh, meanwhile, this big old case with all the leads, the two temperature probes, all the stuff you get with the USB connection to the computer, uh, really makes this guy stand out, I think, especially when the price is about, you know, close to half of this, right? So anyway, what do you guys think of the two meters? Protection looks awesome in this guy. You know, I, I saw somebody point out that Joe, uh, if you guys have seen his um, his testing with his transients, I mean, he, he really goes over and above, I think. But yeah, he he's like a top engineer, it looks like to me. But he uh, does some pretty stringent testing. And I guess some of the... Uh, Lower cost units failed that test or didn't go very high or whatever in his testing. And so he stopped testing units. But this is, you know, one of the high end ones. So, and you can see by the protection that it's got quite a bit of stuff going on in there. And anyway, but they are tested to get the CAT 4 uh, level of safety by third party. So they have passed all the normal multimeter testing for safety in that so i feel like they're safe they're both safe meters but there you go um let me know what you guys think just wanted to show you the under the hood okay all right hey thanks for watching and two big thumbs up to my patrons oh and a big thumbs up to unity for sending this meter out to me and two big thumbs up to my youtube members and danny for being a team member appreciate that and thanks for watching, guys. Hit the uh, like button down below and the thumbs up. Appreciate that and all that. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.